Hello everybody, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, we'll get started here in just a few minutes. Awesome, thank you, Max. How you doing, my friend? How's the uh, load order going? Yeah, the slow cooked ones are probably always the best ones, right? <laughs> Gotta give it the love and care that they need. Okay, it is 11 o'clock in the morning, MST. It should be 6 p.m. UTC, so let's get this show on the road here. His name is Cedrin. Uh, I did random roll for race uh, using the Google random number generator from 1 to 10, and we rolled a Breton. Uh, I also did random roll for preset, and I rolled a 10 on that, and that gives him a bit of a, in my opinion anyway, forlorn, sort of weather-beaten face here. Ooh, camera sensitivity is... Little harsh. Um, so I decided for backstory on this one uh, that he is an orphan from High Rock. Uh, he found himself an indentured servant, uh, mostly working as a stable hand. Uh, he got a little bit jealous of all the knights that he saw, all the Breton knights that he saw returning from their uh, high profile journeys and all the fame and glory and fortune that they were finding out on their quests, so um, he decided he mucked one too many stables and uh, decided to steal a sword and a shield and as much gold as he could carry in his pouches. Uh, and he stole off in the middle of the night uh, to make his own uh, story. So that is his backstory there. Um, now for everything else, I used... I used uh, Unbound's random start mechanic, uh, and they plopped us here, which I think is the western corner of Lake Illinalta. Indeed. Um, and let's see, as far as equipment that it gave us, it gave us uh, just your basic iron sword, uh, a hide shield, some basic clothing here. Uh, a little bit of potions in terms of stamina and health, which is always a good thing, starting off just in case. Um, we got some food. Uh, a bunch of books that are added by the realistic uh, Viking weapons mod. Uh, just crafting manuals that you need to have in your inventory if you want to craft some of these things, which we may do, but I'll probably drop these off at a player home once we get a place to store them. Uh, we got a torch and a couple lockpicks. And of course a whole bunch of gold because he is uh, a thieving scoundrel. <laughs> now I don't think we're going to be doing much thieving with him. Um, and then in terms of magic, we did get some good spells, uh, which is good. So a lot of times that I roll these random starts with Unbound, I don't get any magic. And if I do get magic, I'll get something like Clairvoyance, which is almost useless if you know your way around the game already. Uh, so we did get Fury, which is great, uh, starting off with, um, and Healing, which is also helpful. 
Um, and then in terms of the stone that we were given, we got the Ritual Stone, which is also fortunate. The Ritual Stone does tend to be quite powerful. Um, so as we've seen in the Jagasta playthrough, it will gather up the spirits of the dead around us, and when we enter combat, uh, those spirits will be summoned to fight for us. So that will help uh, get some battlefield distraction for us, take some heat off of us. Uh, and as this is permadeath, that's, a, that's always a good thing. Um, also as Breton, uh, we have the Stones of Galen, uh, which is, you know, the more... So as a Breton passive, uh, you get an extra effect on the stone that you have chosen. Uh, and for the Ritual Stone, uh, Shrine Blessings are four times more effective, but only last for five minutes. So, kind of a trade-off there. Uh, if we see a Shrine that we can uh, become blessed at, we will definitely take those as we go. So that indicates that Cedron here is a bit of a pious guy. Um, so we may go Paladin, Cleric type thing a little bit. Um... Seeing as how his backstory uh, is that he was jealous of the knights coming back into High Rock from their adventures, I think that he fancies himself a bit of an aspiring knight. Um, so I think we're going to go heavy armor with this. It will help keep us alive when we do get hit. Uh, as of right now, uh, one hit could kill us. We could be a one and dunner here uh, from several different enemy types in the game. So that is something to keep in mind. The shield will help, but we'll have to make sure to be quick on the block button. Um, so yeah, I think that's where we're going. We're not going to do the whole sneaky archer thing, because that uh, would obviously be the best way to stay alive in Skyrim. Um, but I've been trying to, for this series, take what Unbound gives me. And... Uh, a sum of all the parts here is that I think Cedrin here wants to be a knight. So let's do that for him. Um, and then in terms of magic, he is obviously naturally talented in some magic. He has had little to no formal training, um, but yet he can cast Fury and Healing just fine. Um, so I will be taking spells as they become available, ones that will help, but I'm going to try to focus mainly on illusion and restoration. So we may end up a, a bit of a paladin um, or uh, a knight with some illusion um, that could be to help both strike fear in the hearts of his enemies and influence his allies. Uh, illusion is actually a much overlooked skill in uh, in the knight class, I think. Um, a good knight will have uh, good influence over his allies and his enemies. Uh, a certain strong charisma, I would say. So I think that sets up... Oh yeah, and I also randomly rolled for religion. I am running Winter Sun, Face of Skyrim. It's an older version... Uh, I haven't updated that in a while, but uh, there were plenty of starting religions, starting deities to worship for the Breton. Uh, I random rolled and got Finaster. Uh, so the tenets here are to explore new locations, find standing stones of Skyrim, harvest the fruits of nature, and Bretons are most deserving of my favor. So yes, we do want to find the standing stones. Uh, we will get a bonus if we find all of them. Uh, I think we're probably going to stick with the Ritual Stone. I'm taking that more as a birth sign than a stone. Um, but just as we get a bonus for being Breton, we'll get a second bonus if we find all the stones. So there's that. So I think that just about does it for the, for the setup of this. So now let's talk about priorities. And before we talk about priorities here, I have to say the terrible, dirty word meta. So please do not turn off the stream. Uh, we will be doing plenty of role play, I promise. Um, but if I'm doing a permadeath series, 
I can't do that without at least mentioning META. Now, META is an acronym originally standing for Most Effective Tactic Available. Now, the global META for Skyrim obviously is the Sneaky Archer archetype. We are going to be avoiding that. Um, the meta that I'm going to be using is going to be a more fluid situational meta. Whenever we get to a safe space like this, we are going to take stock of where we are, what we have, and where we're going. Um, and then from there, we will set up things like hotkeys, uh, strategies, and tactics, uh, and goals based on what we need most for survival. Um, and in doing that, we will analyze our current situation and come up with the most effective tactic available for reaching our next goal. So for me, for that, uh, priority number one is to find a follower. Skyrim is a big, dangerous province, and Cedrin is one Lord Breton, or one lone Breton. He's not a lord. He is not a noble. Um, he is a lone Breton, unarmored, uh, very lightly trained, doesn't have much combat experience at all. Uh, I'm going to use my own knowledge of the game um, to give Cedrin here an extrasensory hint that he needs to follow Lake Illinalta to the east um, and find a small town called Riverwood. Go to Riverwood, Cedrin. There we go. And in order to do this, um, I think I am going to follow with the water on my left. That way I cannot be flanked from that side. I could follow the road over here back to Riverwood, but I know that there are certain dangers on that road, um, such as some skeletons uh, close to the Pillar of Dead's Grasp. Uh, there's a, a bit of a makeshift cemetery over there with some nightshade and some, some skeletons over there. I know that there also are several wolves on the road from here to Riverwood. Once we get to Riverwood, we will have uh, a few options for followers. And I haven't really decided on which one yet, but uh, we'll get to Riverwood and we'll decide then. So that is order of business number one. Find a buddy. Hey friend, how you doing? I've been hunting and fishing in oh. these parts for years. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. The Yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? Oh yeah, water. That's a that's a good thought there. Let's check our needs. We are moderately thirsty. Good thing that we have a nice source of fresh water here. We'll grab a swig while we fill up our water skin. Okay, now I want to take a moment here to go over some play rules and guidelines here. Um, there is a copy of these guidelines in the description of the video. This is how I am going to be shaping my permadeath play here. It is really dark. What time is it? 3.48 p.m., so it's not late, it's not early. Just looks like we have a, a lot of cloud cover in the sky here, blocking out most of the sun. But yeah, rule number one, um, using Skyrim Unbound um, as a random start. So this means that uh, starting location, equipment, spells, and standing stones are all randomly chosen by the mod. Um, dragon spawns and dragonborn status are also randomly selected I don't know if there are dragons in this world. Uh, I don't know if Cedrin is dragonborn. We still have yet to figure that out. Um, and we've already gone over all the equipment, spells, uh, and standing stones and everything like that. Uh, rule 2. Other starting properties such as race, preset, and religion provided by the Winter Sun mod will randomly be rolled via goggle, uh, Google's, goggles random generator. Google's random generator. So... Uh, I am not fortunate, fortunate enough to be uh, an avid uh, tabletop D&D player, so I have none of those fancy dies that uh, a lot of other Skyrim role players have. 
Um, so I use random number generator, Google's version of it. Um, if you also do not have dice to roll for all these random things, if you're not, Google has a very nice random number generator that you can choose the range of numbers that you want to randomly select and it will randomly select one for you. What the hell is going on over there? Okay, that is a small child. I want to keep the water on my left, but there is a rocky outcrop over here. So we're going to assume that this kid lives over here at the mill, and we are just going to try to ignore him as much as possible. Yeah. Hard training, though. That kid has a strong destiny and a fire in his belly, I believe. Um, okay, so rule three. Um, basically, I am just going to use the uh, starting equipment, location, uh, standing stone, race, and everything that is given to me uh, as a guideline for playstyle, which I've already talked about. Cedrin here is an aspiring knight. Uh, so we're going to want to get some armor and things like that. Um, and we will be doing mostly a melee heavy armor, sword and board type character. Um, so yeah, that's just to avoid the global meta we talked about of being a sneak archer. Uh, that would be the most effective way to stay alive in a permadeath run. That is not what we're doing. We are letting Skyrim Unbound and other random roles decide what we're doing for us. Um, rule four, legendary difficulty. What the heck is that? Something just died recently. I don't know what died. I know we saw like an elk over there. Ritual Stone remembered it. I'm just more concerned about what kind of danger is present in this area. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the game right now so I can go over the rest of these guidelines. Uh, yeah, legendary difficulty from the very beginning. That's going to make this permadeath run extremely volatile, extremely dangerous in the early levels of the game. Um, especially if we're doing a random start, uh, legendary difficulty means, um, you know, one hit, one kill from a lot of different enemies. Um, and that could put us in a lot of danger depending on where we start. I think we ended up with a fortunate start here. We're not too far from Riverwood and the sort of unofficial starting area of the game where there are some dungeons and stuff that we can do at a low level if we have to. Um, I am running Wildcat the combat overhaul from a nice ion, the mod, uh, but I am not allowing it to overhaul any of the difficulty levels. So legendary difficulty is vanilla legendary difficulty, which I believe um, is we take, or enemies deal three times the amount of damage that they normally would, and we deal half the amount of damage that we normally would. So, we are going to be weak in terms of damage output and enemies will be strong, but so too will be followers. So that's another reason that we want to get one of, we want to get a buddy for Cedrin here. Rule five, goals and motivations will be assessed between combat encounters based on rough character backstory. Yes, this is what I talked about. Uh, we will be doing plenty of role playing in terms of uh, assessing situations, um, determining motivations, goals, and things like that. Uh, right now, Cedrin is just looking to get to a town, find a friend, uh, and we'll go from there. And he's also a spy an aspiring knight, so uh, we're going to do that too. He's hungry for adventure. Uh, he left the stables um, in High Rock to make his own fortune and glory. Um, and number six, I'll be using Dead is Dead mod to handle permadeath for each character. Now, the Dead is Dead mod gives you one death and one death only, and once you die, the game is over. Uh, the SE conversion of this game, or of this mod, is not working completely correctly. You get the ending screen, and it kicks you back out to the title screen when you die, but it still allows you to load that last uh, save up. Uh, that's how it's not working. But... Uh, I am going to honor 
the permadeath uh, consideration that we have set up, the permadeath rule that we have set up, and as soon as we get kicked back to that title screen, I will go in and delete the saves immediately. Now you will see me saving quite often. Uh, I am running a heavily modded game. It's a pretty serious modding setup with a lot of ESPs and ESLs, a whole lot of plugins. Um, and that of course causes uh, some stability issues from time to time. So uh, if we do crash and it will happen, seems to happen more often during a stream than not, um, we won't have lost too much progress. So you will see me quick saving quite a bit, but uh, it's not safe scumming because if we die, we die. Um, and last gameplay rule here, if the character dies before the stream ends, I'll play another non-permadeath character and proceed with casual play role play for the remainder of the stream. So time is everybody's most limited resource. We only get so much of it in our lives before we don't get any more of it. Uh, and there's no way to make more of it. So um, I'm more uh, constrained by time than anything else. So when I get a window to stream, I'm going to take that whole window. If we die, um, it's going to take a good 30 minutes at least to set up a new character. And I would rather not do that on stream. I would rather have it ready to go. Uh, with the backstory figured out and everything like I did this time. So if I do die, and it could happen on Legendary Difficulty at level 1, uh, this permadeath run could be over in 10 minutes, um, I will take the remainder of the stream to play another character and, and just have fun with Skyrim. Uh, and then finally, there is a, a mod watch uh, link that I posted in the description. Uh, it's underneath all the gameplay rules and everything. Uh, so if you are curious about the load order slash mod list that I am running, uh, go ahead and click that link. It'll take you to Mod Watch, and you get all the mods and plugins and everything that I'm running there. All right, so let's get back into it here. Quick save. Um, now, I can see the faint hints of some standing stones over there. Uh, Cetrin will be inexplicably drawn to these stones. Um, just an internal calling. He feels the need to discover these guys for some reason, so we are going to take a bit of a dip. It is overcast, but it's not too cold, so he's not going to be too shy about disrobing and getting in the water here. And don't look up Cedrin's loincloth. That would be incredibly rude of you. Look at you guys over there trying to catch a glimpse of little Cedron. Okay, so. Um, discover the Standing Stone. So this is also heavily tied to, uh, I believe, the Imperious Race Overhaul by Inai that I am running. Um, we will get a bonus, uh, a racial bonus, once we discover all the Standing Stones. And I believe what that does is it gives you a power that you are able to steal a racial ability from uh, another character in the game. So that will give us some flexibility. Now there are slaughterfish in Lake Illinalta, but they are all on the other side of the island as far as I remember, so I'm not too worried about crossing the water here. I do not have a pickaxe yet. In terms of crafting, Cedron, geez, Cedron is ripped. Look at that. And he's all pissed. He's all, put some damn clothes on me. Um, in terms of crafting, as I said earlier, Cedrin is... Uh, he's mucked one too many stables. Ooh, it is. Really dark out here, isn't it? Jeez, you guys can probably, yeah, the YouTube window is even darker than what I'm seeing on my own screen here. That's a bummer. Uh, but we'll get to uh, more lighted areas soon. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so Cedrin has pretty much fed up with doing manual labor for other people. Ooh, it's the skeleton. The skeleton here fought a mud crab. There might be another skeleton over here. 
Ancient Nord Sword. This might actually be better than the sword that we're carrying, so we will grab that. Oh. There's a dead mud crab. That means that there is... Oh, yep, there's the other skeleton. Okay, so one hit from the skeleton there took a third of our life. So there you go. That's legendary difficulty at level one with no armor for you. And it looks like things are lightening up a little bit. So we got some sun coming through. Um, and as you could tell, our tactic about keeping the, um, the water to our left as to not be flanked already came in handy there. Um, seeing as how Cedrin here is sick of doing manual labor for other people, I don't think he'll be doing much Hunterborn. Uh, he is a knight, not a hunter. Um, although we might take some, some meat for the road. We can cook that up later when we get to a cooking pot. So I'm not going to be running Hunterborn. I think that just will be a little too much, a little too distracting. Uh, it will keep us from being focused on the task at hand. Um, but yeah, it, that same consideration that he is sick of doing manual toil for other people. Um, I think crafting, he's not going to do a whole lot of it. Uh, and that will also affect the meta that we were talking about. Uh, crafting is very powerful in this game. I am running honed metal, so if there is a particular piece that we're looking for and can't buy outright, uh, we can commission one of the blacksmiths to do it for us. Oh, crap. All right. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, sir. That looks like a scavenger. Uh, looting the dead bodies of uh, a Civil War skirmish there. So we're going to give him a wide berth. He doesn't seem too interested in fighting, but he's very protective over his loot there. Um, and this far away from the Lady Stone, I am concerned about Slaughterfish. Are you pointing that at me? Oh, thank God. Okay. So I'm going to go around this outcrop here and just hope that we don't get assailed by a pack of wolves and die an early death. So far, so good. Oh, there are some wolves right there. There are two of them, though. One wolf, I think I can comfortably deal with. Two wolves. It's going to be a little bit more of a situation. Now, we do have the Ritual Stone, so we will not be fighting alone. It also looks like we have some outcrops here in the water. So maybe let's, uh, let's give them a wide berth. If they want to attack us, they'll have to go through the water to get us. And it looks like we got a Sky Shard over here. Now I do know that this area here is just full of slaughterfish. It looks like there is a live elk over there moving his head around. So I'm less concerned about them now. Let's go ahead and go get that Sky Shard because if we find three of them, we get a perk. Okay. This is already very tense for me. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but um, I really don't want to die on stream to two wolves. And there they are right over there. Now, if I'm going to pick my poison between slaughterfish and wolves... 
I'm going to have to pick the wolves. I don't know where they ran off to. They might have gone back. Oh, yeah, there they are. All right, so if we can swim over to this other rock over here and try to stay out of the way of slaughterfish, and then we can swim to that tree over there, we should be out of range of the uh, aggression uh, radius of those wolves. All right, so I don't see anything in the water here, so let's go for it. And of course, we will hear the slaughterfish before we see them. So far, so good. Okay, and it looks like we got an alchemist or some kind of traveling vendor over there. The wolves are slowly making their way over here. Gonna keep an eye on them. So, okay, and it looks like the vendor here has some bodyguards and they are taking on the wolves. We might be able to get a few levels in one-handed. No, guess not. Still, we're alive and that is the name of the game, right? Ooh, okay, okay. still may be some wolves on this road here so yeah as you can see a big part of this style of play this permadeath stuff what is that up there is remaining ever vigilant on the roads okay that looks like a dude next to a dead wolf Doesn't look too heavily armored from what I can tell. It is dark. Is this um, the traveling bard, Talsgar? That yeah, is Talsgar the Wanderer. Okay. Now, if you were actually going toward Riverwood, I would be tempted to follow along with him because even though he is unarmored, and sort of lightly armed, he does tend to be quite tough. And as an NPC in this game, he deals three more damage than we do. Uh, and he is able to take twice the amount of damage that we are. He's twice as resilient. Okay, those guys look like they're up to no good up there. So we're going to let them be. Give them a wide berth. But Talsgar looked like he was content just sitting there thinking about his next song. Writing about his great battle with that single wolf there. <laughs> As bards do. Um, now for Finaster, it said that uh, it wanted to harvest the fruit of Nern. So I don't know if taking he's not going to be doing alchemy as a knight he's probably more apt to buy potions to prepare for a journey or a quest than he is to make his own and again i apologize for how dark the stream is right now it is almost just as dark on my end so we do have poor visibility right now, which I think makes things even more tense in terms of there could be anything around any corner that could kill us at any time. <laughs> okay, so three more standing stones. We are six away from obtaining that racial ability. Okay, so there's Ember Shard up those steps. We have two or three wolves in the forest to the right there, on the right side of the road. So we're going to try to give them 
enough of a wide berth not to trigger aggression. And if we have to, we can jump rocks over there. And there's a waterfall, but I don't think that the fall is too far. No, we can handle this. So generally, there are two wolves uh, around this outcrop here. In fact, am I seeing one of them? No, I don't see any of them yet. Usually you hear them before you see them. And then there's another one farther up into the forest. We'll have our sword and shield ready just in case. Now at this level, at this uh, block skill level, Never shoot them here. okay, they should actually attract aggression of the wolves before the wolves come after us, so there's that. Looks like uh, Naked Dude there was taking liberties with somebody else's wife. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I was saying, at this level of block, the torch is probably just as effective as a shield. Uh, we lose out on some of the armor rating from the shield, but um, that armor rating is almost negligible at this point. Okay, um, we're just about home free. I see Riverwood right there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. All right. Uh, I've been streaming for 38 minutes now, and I already need to... Uh, replace my deodorant <laughs> sweating here hey Good look who it evening, is citizen allow me to introduce myself my name is vander nightbrook and i am your post haste courier representative host haste courier is my face from postcards delivered to every address in skyrim skyrim courier service is under new management mine the old service was so third era slow we have a new business model fresh branding and fully modernized service, making post haste the obvious choice for your next delivery. That and the service is free to all citizens of Skyrim, thanks to a fat government subsidy. <laughs> and uh, I just hopped onto the stream on my phone and realized that there are a bunch of people in chat talking to me, um, <laughs> and it's not showing up on my monitor, so. Uh, I will refresh that in just a second, okay? And then I can I can respond to everybody who is in the chat. Sorry about that. Um, so you're delivering all packages and letters in Skyrim, eh? I deliver anywhere, anytime, buddy. Crawling a forgotten Dwemer city deep in the reach? Delivered. Delivered. Living in a sketchy mushroom on an ash-swept island? Delivered. <laughs> Stuck in seclusion with a bunch of graybeards? Hi, Hrothgar. <laughs> Delivered. I deliver all packages, large and small, from Robber's Gorge to the Ethereum Forge, from Hunter's Rest to Bone Strewn Crest, from the Shrine of Azura to the Twilight Sepulchre, whatever. I get it done with urgency. And I'm sorry, but ethically, I cannot accept any tips. This is a public service, okay? If you have pie, we can talk. Okay, and this is a bug that I've had with um, a lot of different NPCs, but this one seems to be very stable in that uh, I have to cancel out of the dialogue in order to end it, but it's a very, very small trifling matter, and it doesn't bother me in the least. I would much rather have uh, Vander in the game uh, and deal with it than not. Okay, so here we are in Riverwood. I'm going to do a save here. I'm going to pause and I'm going to refresh my stream window so that I can see what everybody's saying. Because I want to talk to y'all. There we go. Now I can see everything. 
Okay, looks like we have uh, Magus80, which I did see before my uh, chat gave out on me. We have 57 Strudel. Good to see you, friend. Hello, Mr. Breton. Yes, Cedrin. Cedrin is his name. And Caladran is here, too. Hello, Caladran. Um, it's not bad for a random start, really. You are correct. I am extremely fortunate with the start that I've gotten. Um, mainly in that uh, I am so close to Riverwood and the so-called starting area of the game where things are, are, are kind of easy. Fury is definitely useful. I see William McNee in the chat. Hello, Hunter of Haggis. Not starting on a as a prisoner on Solstheim then. <laughs> no, uh, that would be terrible. In fact, I don't really know that Unbound has the capability of starting you on Solstheim. I know that Alternate Start uh, Live Another Life does, and that's pretty much the worst one. Uh, the Knight in Morrowind and Oblivion uses Elysian. Yeah, it does. Um, it sure does. Uh, but I think it's easily overlooked. I think most people who do play a, a knight, um, I, and I don't really have any experience in Morrowind, but Oblivion uh, probably tend to ignore illusion quite a bit and just focus on the melee and armor skills. John Pittman is here. Uh, oh, hello, Haster, by the way. Um, John Pittman. Hi, everyone. What a cool concept you've got going here. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully it lasts longer than, you know, the 30 minutes that we've we've been streaming here. <laughs> Slaughterfish, perhaps? Maybe. Uh, I'm guessing you were talking about the death that the Ritual Stone picked up. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Uh, let's see. There's a Flame Adronach spawning somewhere around these parts. I think that's level, though. I don't think that that, that spawns at level 1. I do know what you're talking about. It's, it's right on the south shore of Lake Illinalta, around that big rocky outcrop. Uh, Mr. B plays, says, howdy. Howdy there, Mr. B. Thank you for joining. Sorry I missed the start. No problem. We are just getting going. You haven't missed much. Uh, just some just some setup stuff. Uh, if you want to know any of the guidelines or rules that uh, I am playing with right now, you can you can check the description. It, it, I also have a mod list, a mod watch set up for, for this profile as well. William McNee says, you're a brave lad for doing a permadeath on a live stream. I'm tense just watching it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have no idea how tense this is playing it as well. <laughs> uh, well, knights see potions as a means of healing and protection, but they'd abstain from usage of poison. Yeah, I, I believe so too. Uh, I don't think we'll be using much poison. Um, definitely probably be making heavy use of potions as needed though. Strudel says, definitely tense. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, and yeah, a whole lot of love for Vander and the sketchy mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, the rhymes. Uh, Beofish and Stu did a fantastic job uh, with this mod. I love it so much. It's, it's not leaving my load order ever. Yeah, you're living in one of those sketchy type of mushrooms for sure. Oh, that's okay, Caladran. You don't you don't have to talk all that much. Um, I do enjoy talking with you, but uh, honestly, um, this playthrough might be hard enough that uh, I might need to focus more on the game, especially during uh, dungeons and travel, uh, than I can on the chat. So if I'm not responding to you right away, that's why uh, I'll get to you. Uh, I'll get to responding to chats as soon as we hit like a safe spot, like we are here. Okay, so I think we were saying priority number one is to get a travel buddy. Um, and we have some choices here. We can do the Feindal, uh Sven, Camilla love triangle and pick one of them. Uh, we have Gore that's available right away without having to do anything. He's probably um, mechanically the strongest out of all of them and lore-wise. Uh, as far as Cedrin is concerned, we'll do a bit of role play here. I think that uh, Cedrin would be more drawn to Sven than Feindal, even though Feindal is probably technically stronger. Uh, he would like the cut of Sven's jib more than Feindal. Feindal tends to be a little broody and stoic. Uh, Sven is outgoing and talkative, and he would be more drawn to that, I think. Um, but just in terms of being a... 
Oh, a Stormcloak Soldier. That's going to be helpful uh, in encounters because that was from the uh, the encounter with the Scavenger that we avoided. Um, yeah, okay, so the Ritual Stone will pick up on those. In fact, is there anything we can loot from? Ooh, an Amulet of Talos. Let's see if we have any heavy armor here. We got an Iron Buckler, which is light armor. I don't know if it's any better than the Hide Shield we have right now. Uh, we can sell the arrows, we can sell the dagger, sell the hunting knife. We don't want to fly uh, any faction colors at this point. That's going to be asking for it. Um, and I totally lost my... Wrote over 1,000 words today and can't type well afterwards. Oh, that's okay, Calatron. Uh, yeah, I've seen you've been posting some entries to uh, your Sion story. Uh, so, busy fingers, busy fingers need a rest. Um, but yeah, as I was saying with the followers, uh, I think he would not be able to pass up taking Gore above all the other uh, choices at this point. He is a former um, arena champion. He's big, he's tough looking, he's strong, he's well, well armored right off the bat. So I think we're going to go with Gore. Uh, but first, let's see, it's 7.20 p.m. Let's see if we can... Okay. Whatever you need. Get some My armor from uh, Alvor strong. here. Take a look. Iron Shield. We do have plenty of money to pay for all this. Let's focus first on actual armor. He doesn't have any regular iron armor. He does have steel armor. That's going to take uh, just about a third of our gold, though. But you know what? That's worth it. Um, iron boots. We can go with the steel cuffed boots for 167. Let's do that. We're going to blow through our entire huge supply of gold here. <laughs> but, you know, if it, if it helps us take a hit, it's well worth it. Avoiding stour, uh, stagger from power attacks and bashes. It's only a 10% chance... We don't have enough to afford this anyway. If we go with the regular steel shield, we will have uh, almost 400 gold left, which is a good amount. Get two more armor than from the banded shield, so let's do that. Uh. All right. Uh, we do not want the iron buckler. Let's go with the steel shield here. And get our hotkey set up for that. Uh, the hide shield is set at 1, so we're going to change that over to 1 as well. And I don't seem to be able to... There we go. Let's take a look at that ancient Nordic sword that we got. It is two damage points better than the iron sword that we have going, so let's go ahead and switch that out. Oops. And I think that about does it there. Um, I do plan on using Fury more. I think somebody mentioned using Fury on uh, the Wolves over there. Um, Fury is going to be a challenge to use at first because as a knight, we're not going to be too sneaky. Uh, and we are not going to rely on sneak very much. That's part of the play guidelines I have set up. Um... Fury takes... Ooh, the horns are not great. <laughs> uh, Cedron is not a fan of the horns, so I think as soon as we find a Helmum that uh, looks a little better than this, we will switch that out. But uh, in the meantime, we are taking that off. There we go. He's looking a little more knightly already. Here's our steel shield. Look at that. Breton knight in the making. I like it. 
Um, and of course the sword. The sword doesn't look great either. Uh, he's not a big fan of it, but it is more effective than the flimsy practice sword that he stole from uh, for a new blade? his master's estate in High Rock. So we can sell off the crap that we're not using. Excellent, excellent. Now we're going to need a better lighting solution than the torch that we're carrying around, so let's take a look. Uh, I am running wearable travel or wearable lanterns, so let's buy a couple of iron ingots from Alvor here. Craft one of these up. Now, in terms of crafting, Cedrin is a little hands off. He is sick of doing manual toil for other people, as mentioned. But he doesn't mind doing some things for himself. He does have some experience uh, maintaining farm equipment um, and things like saddles and stuff, as he worked as a stable hand. Oh, and I'm going to need your tanning rack there, too, Alvor. Sorry, buddy. I'll be out of your hair in a minute. Um, so he does have the experience. He's going to... I can see him improving his own gear, but he's not going to be too concentrated on crafting anything. He's going to buy what he can, make what he can't. Not bad. Reminds me when I first started Okay, we have a lantern now. Great, great, great. Looking good, looking good. Okay, one last thing that I have to do is set up the hotkey for this guy. And we'll be ready to continue. So, this unfortunately is going to be a big part of this permadeath series is making sure that we're prepared for um, the uncertainty of what we're going to find on the road uh, and a little more of the certain dangers that we are going to find when we hit our uh, our goal location for the moment if that makes sense Yes, we did buy the armor. Let's let's let me catch up on chat here. And he likes horker stew. <laughs> the gore does like horker stew. I did buy the armor, Haster. Uh, I'm trying to do some role play mixed in with uh, meta gameplay here. Um, so yeah, it, it's part of Cedrin's backstory that he is not much of a crafter. He's not interested in it. Uh, he will buy what he can and make what he can't. Cedric? Uh, it's Cedrin. Uh, it was a, a random name generator, a random Breton name generator. Uh, Cedrin, C-E-D-R-A-N. Uh, and if you feed, or if you click on some random uh, Breton name generators, you get some really wacky names, that's for sure. But I finally found one that rolled off the tongue a little, little better. Uh, Cedrin sounds like a name that I can say over and over again, and uh, not want to cut my tongue out. So <laughs> there was that. And just switch my hotkey over to the light. So yeah, as I was saying, just getting my hotkey set up and my equipment where I need it is going to be a big part of permadeath because we need to be prepared as possible. Cedrin is his name. Yeah, uh, Rasharito of the Doritos. This is a randomly selected permadeath character. I randomly rolled a Breton. His name is Cedrin. Uh, he's an aspiring knight from High Rock. Um, we are playing on legendary difficulty. 
Uh, if you want to see any more of the guidelines I'm going to be going by, uh, you can check the uh, description the fire. for the video. And, the and there is also a link to my mod watch if you have any questions on mods. And I'm also uh, happy to answer any specific questions about mods um, if you want to throw them in chat. Uh, if you see anything that doesn't make sense to you or not familiar, I'm happy to talk mods. Uh, I just may not get to it for a couple minutes, so just just bear with me, okay? All right, priority number one: finding a buddy. Well, then you're in luck. I do need a companion. I reckon I killed more men. And you look dangerous. And you sound dangerous too. Okay, so ever the smartass, I think Cedrin is going to uh, say so. You've killed more than 1,440 men, eh? Not few, huh? Hmm. At this rate, I guess I better change it to seconds then. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> you know, uh, Strudel, I actually was I was waiting to use that joke until Cedrin died. <laughs> because if he died, he would be ex-Cedrin. And that would be fitting because that would be a big headache if he died so soon. Um, so, how have you managed to kill so many friends, Gore? Or friends. How have you managed to kill so many men, Gore? I hope you're not killing friends. <laughs> It's all in the hips, friend. Killing a bandit. Uh, playing a battle mage or spell sword character. Uh, I'm playing a knight character. Um, he does have some some skill in magic, namely um, uh, fury and healing is what Unbound randomly gave us. So I'm gonna try to focus on illusion and restoration skills. So. Yeah, a bit of probably more uh, of a knight with illusion or kind of like a paladin character too because he is a bit pious. We're going to get a lot of um, bonuses uh, from shrines and stuff currently. Uh, yeah, Gore, there's also an inordinate amount of grunting involved. <laughs> and their pain. So I think Cedrin kind of shares the um, the sense of humor that Gore has. It's very crude, pretty offensive. <laughs> um, but, you know, Cedrin grew up working uh, as a farmhand, stable hand. Um, so with the other laborers, uh, yeah, things got a little crude, uh, but that's right in his element. So, um, and where did you learn to fight? I got my start as a pit dog in the Imperial. I know you too well. <laughs> yeah, you knew where I was going with that, didn't you? Gladiator. As far as the Exedron. Got bored and quit. They say the best techniques are left by the survivors. With me gone, I guess everyone will have something to offer. The Gladiator, huh? Well, that's impressive. I know. And I would have been grand champion, too, if not for the burden. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Fair maidens in my bed and good stew in my belly. Some burden. Well, that ain't what I'm talking about. So why did you leave the arena then? Well, friend, it all comes down to who your opponent is. I'm square with killing men. But with a grand champion, ain't no more men to fight. So, they bring in beasts, minotaurs and things. I don't like it one bit. If a man chooses to enter the arena, it's what you call his prerogative. A beast ain't got no say in the matter. I kill horkers for food and bears for hides. I don't kill no animal for sport. And then why are you here in Skyrim then? The Horkers, my friend. The Horkers. I can't get enough of a good bowl of Horkers stew. <gasps> After those ju uh, jokes previously, I think Cedrin expected him to be referring to women as Horkers. 
But yeah, stew for sure. And coming from High Rock, where cuisine was uh, a, set, a source of pride for a lot of the people there, I think uh, Cedron's going to try to spice up this horker stew a little bit with some carrots and minced onion. You keep talking like that, and we'll need to get you an apron and a chef hat. Also, horkers. <laughs> okay. Well, I haven't really seen any horkers around here, so what gives? That isn't it. You see, I've tried stews of all different flavors from all over Tamriel. I've tried your venisons and your steaks. I've tried your bug meat, your horror pies, and chorus nuggets. Some wood elf charlatan even tried to sell me what he called a wyvern steak, but it tasted like mountain goat. I've tried every meat from the Somerset Isles to the shores of Solstein. Stews of all different flavors. <laughs> compared to a fresh pot of worker stew. I prefer the sarcastic I bald ones personally. A, I haven't tried a dragon. And call me crazy, but I think I saw one fly this way not long ago. Well, I don't know about all this dragon talk. Um, I haven't seen any. Uh, so I don't know why you're talking about them. But uh, if we do find a dragon, we shall hunt it together and dine on its flesh. How about that? Well... Beard's optional, yeah. <laughs> problem of the scales. We need to find a way in. Unless you plan on using your tea. Alright, so what do you say we do this whole uh, seeking fortune and glory thing together? Sounds like we both are in need of a companion, yeah? Let's go. Alright. Okay, so priority one complete. We have a buddy to watch our back. Uh, and to crack some skulls for us. And, uh, more importantly, keep our skull from being cracked. <laughs> okay, so priority two, I think, is going to try to find a base of operations. And, um, in this profile, I do have Ryak's End available for us. I don't know how cheaty this is. Um, it doesn't give us any kind of advantage in combat, but having... Um, a, a safe space to um, sort of plan our next moves and store all our stuff uh, is a good thing, I think, and will uh, help facilitate this playthrough a little further. So priority two is going to be to go there, get that set up, um, and then we'll start uh, trying to make a name for ourselves. Uh, and there are some places around here that we can do that. But first, uh, let's go ahead and uh, address our mild hunger and thirst, and we will get a room and sleep. Thank you. Here, this we got rooms and food, drink too. I cook. Ain't much else to tell. Any news or rumors floating about? Take a look at this. Okay, beware of necromancers. Um, yeah, that necromancer might be a little above our pay grade at this point. So, sorry, William, but I don't think we're going to be chasing after Zora anytime mm -hmm. too soon. Um, the dungeon as a whole is fairly easy uh, if you can avoid the runes and the traps. Um, but that one necromancer is really tough. He tends to cast Ice Storm, uh, and that will tear through anybody at this low a level. So, need? there's that. Gore, I think we'll be happy with for some time. But we'll let him relax for the time being, well, and let's see you? if we can get a room from Delphi. You're that visitor been poking around. Oh, I'd be poking. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Oh, okay, then. I think it's the room on the left, right? Nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and wait until about 11. That'll get us up at about 7 if we sleep 8 hours right now. We are feeling a bit fatigued. We're going to get some 
We'll try some of this Nord Mead. That was absolutely disgusting. We're not doing that again. <laughs> uh, I'll have some of the Horker Loaf, some of the vegetable soup, and I'll take a swig of water here, and that should just about take care of us. Great. Food for the thirsty, rooms for the weary. Now this is a temple. Indeed it is. Zora's busy up on High Hrothgar now. Yeah, it's true. She's got a lot of training to do. She's gonna take up Tariel's mantle, that's for sure. Get a solid eight hours here. Be ready for the uh, the dangers that await ahead of us. A bit hungry. We probably don't need to address that right away. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, Gore. Follow me, friend. Uh, first, let's go ahead and meditate. Pray to... Ooh, there's the chicken. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. There's a lot of good stuff in that chicken. And not just protein. Not just lean protein. Um, for anybody wondering what I'm talking about, uh, I'm running the Triumvirate spell mod, and if you kill that chicken there, you'll get all of the Triumvirate spell books in the mod. <laughs> Will not do that. It was a very fitting end of the series, uh, William. Uh, it was very heartfelt, it was emotional, and it was just the perfect ending for such a long and storied character. Uh, well done, well done, my friend. All right, so 30% uh, favor, just about, with uh, Finaster. Um, and that probably has to do with the four standing stones that we we're able to find on our way to Riverwood here. So let's go ahead and stop in the general trader here, see if there's anything we can sell off. Has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking What's about the this. point of paying for stuff? Yeah, me too, a little bit, Strudel. <laughs> Sorry you had to hear that. It was a very emotional episode. Well, I mean, that's that series has been a mainstay of our community well, for years now. But the Riverwood Trader is still open. Feel free to shop. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. All right, do we have anything to sell? The Amulet of Talos. Um, not sure how this character feels about Talos. We may not even be Dragonborn. Don't know. Uh, the clothes we'll keep. Um, they may be more appropriate than uh, armor for certain situations. We're good with the potions. We're going to need those. The uh, alchemy ingredients, definitely getting rid of those. The crafting supplies. The lock picks, I haven't decided. Let's see, I think I am running uh, the lock overhaul for this. I think I have it activated. I can bash locks open or I can use a spell uh, to open them. I don't think I'm going to be needing the lock picking. Uh, Cedrin is not much of a thief. Thieves. As if things weren't bad enough. The Riverwood Trader. Let's also see if he's got any uh, spells that we might be able to make use of. In particular, clairvoyance might add a gameplay mechanic to the sort of ESP that I, I've given him. Um, I think being born under the sign of the ritual and him able to channel uh, spirits of the dead to help fight for him uh, would give him would mean that he's sort of a conduit to the spirit world. And I think that's his in as sort of an extrasensory uh, perception, um, which is basically me telling him things that he can do and things that he should do and maybe not need to worry about. 
Uh, Frostbite, I don't see us as much of a battle mage, so destruction magic's probably not going to be a big thing. Fury, we already have. Lesser Ward. This could be important. This could get us through some uh, magical encounters as far as um, enemies that want to cast at us. Alteration, we don't seem too interested in, and Conjuration, we don't seem too interested in either. Uh, Lesser Ward is a good one. Um, part of the consideration this early in the game for any permadeath run, especially with Unbound, um, is that I think dragons can appear uh, as early as the very beginning of the game at Dragon Walls. Um, but I think as soon as you hit level 10, there's a chance that they could spawn randomly. So we need to be ready for dealing with those, um, with both the breath attacks, which I'm not running any any dragon overhaul, so it's going to be either ice or fire. Um, the uh, the lesser ward probably isn't going to do too much, but it could save us from dying in one hit. Um, and as our restoration skill gets better, that will get stronger, uh, and we'll just have to keep our eye out for more uh, ward spells that we can make use of. Um, the other consideration there is some kind of ranged damage. Uh, now, Cedrin is no archer, but I think as soon as we are able to uh, obtain a crossbow of some sort, we need to do that. Uh, even non-range specialists uh, can use a crossbow as long as they can point it accurately at their enemy. They can effectively use a crossbow, or more or less effectively anyway. Okay, and uh, did I hear something happen? Uh, yeah, we, we did have a bit of a, a break-in. We, we still have plenty to sell. Robbers were only after one thing. An ornament. Solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. Uh, well, yeah, I could help you get the claw back if you want. You could? I've got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. If you're going to get those thieves, you should head to Bleak Falls Barrow, northwest of town. So this is your plan, Lucan? Yes. So now you don't have to go, do you? Oh, really? Well, I think your new helper here needs a guide. When I finished mine, I had to take no. several weeks just to catch my By breath the before I could start Why? the next thing. It's a but weird feeling. The edge of town. Yeah, it's like the end of an era, right, Strudel? Yes, it'll be a while before I play Skyrim again, taking a break to play other stuff, and I'll need to purge my LO and start over. Ooh, that, that sounds scary to me. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this load order as, as long as possible. And it's gone through a lot of uh, tweaking uh, and evolution, um, but I am running an old EXE, which greatly limits what I can run as far as mods uh, and newer versions of SKSE and stuff like that. Even with the uh, the address redirector, uh, my EXE is so old that even though it does load the address loader, it does not actually work. So one of these days I'll get around to doing a full reinstall on it, but uh, I hope that's far in the future. <laughs> He's a tricky one. We'll grow hair as we'll get a go at some point. Oh, nice! We all love we'll grow hairs. I want to continue CL and Tele videos, but not sure if I have enough energy for edits and stuff. Yeah, you know, it's only worth doing if you love it, you know? Um, and if you get to a point where you don't have the energy to love it as much as you feel like you should, then, yeah, maybe just take a break. Put it on the back burner, you know? Having fun is the name of the game. Hey, Simpa, no, have not died yet. We just purchased our armor. Um, we were able to find Gore at the Riverwood Inn. Uh, we were able to successfully navigate our way along the south bank of uh, Lake Illinalta. Um, we are equipped now and ready for adventure. Um, the next phase is, or the next main goal, once we have found our companion that will watch our backs for us, is that uh, we're going to find a home, a base of operations here. Uh, we did also take on the Bleak Falls Barrow quest, but I think we're going to do the Ember Shard Mine 
quest first, just to see if we can level up a little bit. Um, now there are wolves on this road. Uh, at least one, sometimes two, depending on which wolves chase which prey where and how far. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be ready for this. Uh, welcome aboard, by the way, Simba. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're here. If I'm going to die, I would rather it not be alone. <laughs> okay, so that's one issue I have with uh, the Ritual Stone, is that a lot of times it will spawn a wolf to fight other wolves, and then the faction of the wolf um, changes... And they stop attacking the other wolves, and they start attacking me. Okay, so even fully armored and heavy armor, uh, we took almost 50% health there from um, basically an enemy that we could not see. Okay, so that should be it for the wolves. Um, the player home here that we're going for is Ryx End. Uh, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know that I make heavy use of it. Quite often. It's not going to play a heavy part in this series. Uh, it's just a place where I can drop off some stuff um, and get equipped for our next adventure. Um, planning ahead for... Um, our next dungeon crawl, uh, our next combat encounter is going to be a very big part of this series, I think. Fort Amal? We're not doing Fort Amal. <laughs> uh, not anytime soon, anyway. Oh, let me catch up on chat here while I do all this. <clears throat> Maybe a test character. He'll be more of a fun one. Um, yeah, I think the character that you did before Dana Fey was Quintal, right? And she was kind of a test character for the Dana Fey playthrough, if I remember correctly. I remember Quintal. Or Quintal. In more of a Scottish accent. Do we have a wolf skin to put up? We do. Look at that. Do we have an elk skin to put up? We do not. I think I used that already. We have a deer hide. We do not have an elk hide. Yeah, well. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Now, I'll come back here to sort of uh, manage my inventory and stuff like that. We don't really have any potions or anything to drop off, but... Uh, as we do accumulate more potions that we don't use, uh, I will drop them off here um, and sell what I don't feel like I'm going to use. Um, crafting materials and stuff I'll put up over here. Again, I'm not doing a whole lot of crafting. But I think I do have some hides and stuff that I can put in here that we are not currently using. And now that I have the travel lantern, I think... Oh, Gore's going to go take a bath. Hide your eyes. I was going to give him a torch, but I'm not going to get in the hot tub with him. That's for sure. Um, looks like he's making his own horker stew in the hot tub. Gross. <laughs> enchanting. Uh, I might do enchanting just to unlock like the spell scribe abilities. We'll see. Um, I probably won't be doing a whole lot of enchanting of my own equipment, but I will probably be doing a lot of enchanting just to level it up uh, so that I have the option to do the spell scribe stuff later on. And let's see, we'll drop off our clothing. We're not going to need that. Oops, anytime soon here. I hope that comes back. Yeah, there we go. It is already safe storage, but uh, Dynamic Things wants to make sure. Sometimes I can eat whatever you just put in there, but a little bit of graphical funkiness there. That's a, a high-res uh, texture pack for the cooking that 
uh, is slightly incompatible with Ryx End here, so that looks a lot better. And we can use this now to cook up that venison that we that we took. Ooh, we got some liver here too. There we go. We got some munchies for the road now as well. Place to sleep. Um, okay, I think we're pretty much set up. Oh yeah, I wanted to offload all these books here. In case there is something here that I want to craft for myself. Um, I would like having these things on hand just in case. Some nice pieces in this mod. And you need to have the book in your inventory in order to craft it, so. Like to have those easily available. Okay. We'll go ahead and read the note there. Helgen Reborn, I'm not gonna start that up just yet. Um, I kind of want to get uh, established in the world a little bit. Maybe run a couple quests before I get that going. Uh, Helgen Reborn is uh, quite high level. Um, it doesn't start off so bad, but it scales pretty quickly. Uh, we're not going to be taking that on anytime soon. But I will be holding on to the book in my inventory um, for a little bit. I will probably trigger that probably eh, level 5 or 10 or, or something like that. And we'll go ahead and get the quest for Zora there, even though it'll be a few levels before we're able to take on that mage there. AFT read me. I can go ahead and dump that too. Book sets. Book storage. Notes and journals over here, we'll go ahead and... I like to try to keep a clean inventory. Uh, especially if we're going to be doing a lot of prep work for what we're going to be doing next. Uh, I like to have a very clean inventory and only take along what we're going to need and use. Okay. So the next... Order of business. Okay, so that's priority number one and priority number two. We have a base of operations. We have uh, a strong companion to help us out in our travels. Um, and now it's just time to start making a name for ourselves. So now we're going to get into the real danger. Um, I like to consider Ember Shard Mine sort of a baby's first dungeon here. Um, it is very stable. There are, in, in terms of what enemies you're going to find where and what they're going to do to try to hurt you. Um, and with a companion, that makes it even easier, uh, especially if you have the ritual stone, uh, so on and so forth. Um, it's uh, good to get a few levels. Um, there are certain situations where you can find yourself in trouble there. We'll just have to take it slow. But there are ways that you can use the terrain to your advantage to stay alive. Um, there are lots of like bridges and level changes and stuff that the enemy AI has trouble with that we can manipulate quite easily. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, we have our hotkeys set up. I don't think we're going to need lesser ward, so I'm not going to hotkey that. Um, but we do have Fury, which we're going to be able to use in some situations. Uh, healing is ready to go. Um, we've already meditated today, so we'll switch that to tweak commands in case we need to get Gore to do anything in particular. And I do want to give Gore this torch here. Just remember, everything's better bloody. Just leave me all the food. Yeah, for sure. And if, you know, I need to quickly get to a journal or a book or, a, a, you know, a spell tome or something, um, it's it's helpful not to have to go through, like you said, an entire library in your inventory to get to what you want. All right, so Gore will use that torch when he All feels right, it is appropriate. Uh, we'll get some more in Ember Shard as well. All right. Big moment of reckoning. 
We are quite well armored. We have a friend to watch our back. So let's head to Ember Shard. And then once we get some combat experience under our belts, then uh, we will address the Leak Falls Barrow situation here. Now let's not forget to use Fury when we have the opportunity here. That's both going to uh, level up our Illusion sp uh, skill, which has some very nice passive abilities in it, in the perk tree, that will help us uh, as a knight type character here. Um, and it will also help us deal with uh, being outnumbered too. Um, the problem is Fury takes a, a little bit of time to become effective. Um, enemy's aggression tends to not redirect right away, especially if they see you. And since we're not being a sneaky character, we're not going to have the benefit of being undetected before that uh, furious enemy grabs some, uh, grab some alchemical ingredients here to make Finaster healthy. Uh, happy. Um, we're not going to have the benefit of being undetected before that furied enemy picks out its next target. But there are some situations in Ember Shard where we might be able to make use of that anyway. Um, so my default loadout here is going to be sword and shield so I have access to block right away just in case something um, catches us off guard. which we are coming up on some wolves here that we avoided on our way to Riverwood, so let's be ready for that. Now hopefully this doesn't get out of, t out of hand if the Ritual Stone decides to summon a bunch of ghostly wolves. Uh, we can quickly become beset by uh, a pack of alive and dead wolves all at once. Now the angry husband and the uh, philandering husband there, or a philandering uh, playboy, might have taken care of the wolves in this area for us, but I'm going to stay vigilant here just in case. Um, in terms of followers, I'm using AFT, so technically I could take a whole bunch of followers on and just not worry about it. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try to follow the vanilla rules for followers, so I can have one follower at any time. Oh, now I'm hearing some wolves. Now what's not going to be good is if we um, encounter the wolves while we're fighting while we're fighting the bandit there that's standing watch outside of Ember Shard. So I think what I'm going to do is try to take on these wolves and clear them out first. Fight the Falmer. Y'all are trying to get me killed, aren't you? I know, there is some kind of morbid curiosity, morbid fascination with seeing a permadeath character die. <laughs> Nobody wants to see it, and yet everybody wants to see it. Okay, let's uh, let's do Fury on this guy here. Just in case there are anybody, any other wolves around him. Now he's coming right at us, so he might be a lone wolf in this situation, which is fine. Oh, nope, there are two. Okay, so that's good. Good call. Good call, d Lord. <laughs> Time block there. Very nice. And there's another wolf there, too. They were just farther up in the, in the forest there. Three of them. Okay, not bad, not bad. Much rather fight them here than against other bandits there, for sure. 
Yeah, like I was saying, there is a, a morbid fascination with watching permadeath characters die. Every, everybody roots for the streamer, but uh, if, a, if a death is going to happen on a permadeath run, they want to see it, right? Are a good place for exercise. I'm the same way when I watch permadeaths on like uh, Twitch and stuff like that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Keep our keep our guard up here. Go for those timed blocks. There was a power attack there, and I'm getting locked in by my companions. Did I ever tell you I spent half a year in a dungeon? It took three companions to haul me in. I don't know what for, but I reckon they had good call. Um, let's see, we are blown through our cash supplies pretty quickly here, getting set up for uh, the dangers of the world. You know, we'll take the woodcutter's axe just in case we need some wood for something. Um, so I'll be trying to loot stuff that I can sell at uh, a decent cost to um, to weight ratio. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about that, Simba. Uh, I love the uh, I love the taunting. Keep it up if you want. Finally, some Besides, I can use the things that you're goading me into trying to uh, reinforce things that I uh, should try to avoid at this level, right? <laughs> okay. Now, these enemies should be uh, far enough away. There's enough terrain for them to have to navigate that uh, I should have time to pull out my shield and get ready for the frontal assault if I miss. We did not miss. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, this other guy should be at full health, though. Okay, I'm going to go try to flank him. Try to get some of that one-handed skill leveled up there. Uh, yeah, Fury was a major blessing. Ancient Nord Arrowheads. Uh, good uh, value to weight ratio there. So I will take it. Uh, I'm running the self-converted version of Knock to Tip with this, um, which I do love uh, dearly as a mod. Um, but since we're not going to be doing much of any archery... Um, those, uh, those crafting supplies are going to be of limited use to us. What were they cooking? Cabbage potato soup. Why not? Smells fresh. Smells good. Or as good as a cabbage soup can smell, I, I guess. What do you need? I would like to have a supply of iron here, so I'm going to go ahead and take the iron that's in the mine, just in case I want to either upgrade something or craft something. Uh, if you survive long enough, the higher Falmer dungeons would certainly be a worthy challenge. Yeah, so I think um, end game challenges for the or challenges uh, goals for this character um, are going to be just around gaining notoriety. Uh, as mentioned, he's an orphan. Um, he's very disgruntled with his uh, life as a indentured farm servant. We'll let them engage over there. Missed with a fury twice. Um, so things like um, Hearthfire, uh, becoming Thane, will be quite important to him. Uh, I haven't decided yet what uh, the end game goal is. If we make it to a point where he's so strong. Uh, that it's he's probably not going to die 
in many different situations um, that we could just call it a, a, a series or not a series, but call it a character and uh, claim claim success. Uh, I haven't decided what that is yet, um, but I would like to come up with something that uh, you know if this if this character gets a bit long in the tooth, and I know I am very much counting my chickens before they hatch with this. Um, but I would like to keep it fresh and, and move on to a new character at some point if that becomes a thing. What was that? I don't know. What was that? Oh, really? Come back from the dead just to mine some ore for me? <laughs> Fury spells are so fun. Shame it never fits my characters. Yeah. Um, I do have a lot of fun with Fury spells. Uh, as mentioned, they do work better with a sneaky character. Uh, just game mechanics wise, but um, yeah, quite useful. Sometimes uncommon ingredients can sell for a good price here. Iron Sword of Sparks. Okay, interesting. I think I'm going to opt for just straight up physical damage. Staff of Fury. That could come in handy if we run out of Magicka. Brigand Plate Harness. Um, we'll see if that uh, works a little better for Gore here once we get a, a chance to reevaluate re our gear. Better bloody. Maybe have others submit concepts for you to choose from before you die. It will alleviate stresses of you doing all the work as well as engagement with everyone. Yeah, I thought about um, engagement as well, Magus. I do like the random start thing, though. Um, I think that is interesting enough just to see uh, randomly what what kind of gameplay style I'll be going for, uh, and it also becomes a cool challenge to see how I survive it, especially early early in the game. Okay. So this is one area where I'm going to use Sneak, and if I can Fury that Archer up there, I can uh, have him gain... I can have him distract uh, both the guy down here working in the Forge and what's usually a higher level guy over here sitting at that table over there. I don't know if we can see him, see him from here. Ah, uh, no, I can't see him. Um, but yeah, maybe things like... Uh, I can still do the random start challenge, but have a concept in mind of where I want to get to in terms of like a gameplay style. Or build or something like that. And have like a poll or something. For people to vote on it. Still do the random start, but uh, part of the challenge is, how do I get there? Oh man, there we go, all right. All right, let's get in there, Gore. They should both soften each other up enough that uh, they shouldn't be too bad. Where are you, Gore? Oh, this guy is kind of tough. Okay, dungeon number one clear. So far, so good, huh? So yeah, Magus, that's that's a pretty good idea. 
Um, and I'm always going to be trying to think of ways to engage the audience a little bit more, maybe. Uh, audience engagement is easier to do on Twitch than it is YouTube, I feel like. You set up bots and, and things like that. Um, I'm still thinking about moving over to Twitch, but just not having control over over the advertisement and stuff like that is is something that uh, I don't know. Is I go back and forth between whether or not I want to grow my channel or if I want to stay um, true to like a smaller group and just doing what I want to do purely for fun. Because you know, once it gets to the point where. I feel more of an obligation for it, it becomes less fun. Uh, and if if it's making money, then I'm going to feel obligated. You know? That way you can have several characters lined up. Yeah. Gotta love it when you fury the rope. <laughs> I know. I have uh, some, like, uh, aiming fix mods going too, which uh, it makes it so that things don't always go exactly where I aim because it's trying to help out a little bit with that. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the lock overhaul. Well, I mean, you could via any of the three discords that we share as well, just throwing that out there. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, and please don't feel hesitant to, to throw any suggestions at me. Uh, I am open to suggestion in all assets of my life, really. Um, and I'm always trying to think of a way to, to make this experience better, you know? Um, so that is something that, I, that I'll think about. Uh, I have played this game enough that I think I am fairly decent at just about all of the different build architects or archetypes um, that I could probably run a permadeath with just about anything. Um, and I'm try, not trying to boast there, but it, it could uh, it could be a source of uh, diversification of you know what people see on this channel as far as gameplay and stuff. Sorry, taking a sip of my soda here. Uh, lock overhaul, lock overhaul. Lock requirement. We are going to activate lock requirements. Um, we'll go ahead and do smashing locks as an option. I don't think I want to use my sword to pry open a chest because you know, if we're role playing even a little bit, we wouldn't want to damage our sword in that way. But this character does have some inherent talent in magic, so we do have an open lock spell that has, I guess, our alteration skill levels up, which we're not going to be using alteration a whole lot. Um, maybe we'll bring another weapon along with us just for the express purpose of unlocking oh he's going to be at that for a while just for the express purpose of unlocking chests that we can't unlock with a spell okay let's uh loot the place here forgotten magic phantom shroud this is illusion Take the form of a phantom making sneaking 20% more effective we're not going to be doing a whole lot of sneaking though but in situations where we have to, this might come in handy. So let's just put it in our repertoire. Not very knightly thing to do, so I'll try to avoid using it, but it's something. Yeah, I suspected as much, Haster. Maybe a little hammer type thing. Yeah, I think we saw some steel war picks um, on, uh, on an enemy up toward the entrance. Maybe I'll grab one of those. Um, I think a, a pick to pry open and, and use as a crowbar. In fact, I could probably even use the pickaxe for that, right? We'll see which one weighs more. Pickaxe might be fine. And that scales with one-handed, which we will what do you need? 
which we will be uh, using quite extensively. Okay, um, and since uh, evaluating meta is going to be a thing, uh, since the main goal here is survival, um, I think I'm going to avoid reading skill books for the time being. Um, just because skill levels come easy early in the game. And if we get to a point where, uh, you know, we need some, some levels late in the game, we're going to be happy to have those skill books to fall back on. So I'll try to avoid those as much as possible. Um, there is a mod that allows you to pick up those skill books without actually using them or reading them and consuming them in effect. But uh, I'm not running that mod. So if we end up uh, on a quest where we need to retrieve one of these skill books for someone, um, we're going to end up consuming that skill level for that book uh, just by picking it up. So there's that. That rope had it coming. <laughs> it sure did. Um, please move, Gore. Let's see, this corridor might be too small for the two of us. But luckily, I'm running AFT. Oh, got stuck in an animation there, it looks like. Wait for it. There we go. Probably in the middle of the animation when, uh, when I switched out of first-person view there. Okay, more iron over here. And I promise you won't be watching me uh, mine for iron this entire series. <laughs> I just want to get a, a decent supply to, to drop off at Ryak's end just in case there's something I want to I wanna make for Cedrin here. Or new armor or something for gore. Okay, so what we're going to do after this is um, we'll probably stop by Alvor uh, and Lucian, or Lucian, Lucius, the general trader in Riverwood. I think it's Lucian, isn't it? Lucian Valerius. I know Lucian is the follower mod. Um, we'll sell off all of the loot that we don't want to keep here. Um, and then we'll head back to Ryak's End to drop off the crafting materials. And then I think we'll head off to Bleak Falls. And there are some tough challenges in Bleak Falls, but um, one of the first five videos or so, I would say, was a uh, quote-unquote perfect run of Bleak Falls Barrow with an unarmored character on Legendary oh, Difficulty. Although the Legendary Difficulty was modded to do more damage from the player character, the damage levels were more uh, equalized. Um, so I am very practiced with Bleak Falls. Um, so now I'm saying that I am confident running Bleak Falls at a high difficulty level and a low character level, um, I will probably die a horrible death in front of everybody and look like a complete idiot. <laughs> um, which will leave me ashamed for the weekend, but will make for some compelling viewing, uh, on your end, I think. <laughs> Yeah, Lucian, I think, is his name, the the general trader, but I, doesn't he spell it with an A instead of an E, like the follower mod? Like Lucian? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm fairly confident with Bleak Falls. I think I can do it. I've done it enough at level 1 and not had a problem. Uh, but, you know, this game can be kind of janky. Um, and at times, if it drops my input right at the, at the wrong moment, um, I can take uh, a shot from uh, a Draugr wielding a battle axe or something and uh that that's gonna be that's gonna be it for cedron we will have uh an expedited ex cedron whatever you need lucan is the traitor lucan lucian is the follower okay i can forge it lucian is the modded follower yeah yeah i i knew about the follower looking to protect yourself i was trying to think of the name of the vendor we're gonna keep the sparks we're gonna disenchant that We're going to keep the pickaxe. I think this is what we're going to be using to tear open chests with the lock overhaul. Woodcutter's axe, we're going to leave that at Reich's end because there is a, uh, a chopping block that we can use that on there. We don't have to carry that around. Now let's see if we can uh, give this. I think this is an upgrade to Gore's armor, so we're going to hold on to that for now. The rest of this stuff we can get rid of. Until next time. And he also needs some iron gauntlets, so need? if we encounter those, Just we'll remember, be sure to pick those up and give them to him. Just leave me all the food. Okay, so let's give him the brigand plate harness and see if he equips it. Yes, he does. So that is an upgrade for all right, him. Then. Excellent. He also needs a helmet. And I think maybe once we find a helmet that's more suitable for us, that doesn't have those ridiculous horns, we can give the uh, horned helmet to Gore. I do have uh, the Lucian mod downloaded. I do not have him installed because I haven't had ch uh, a chance to play through his quest and uh, experience the mod to, to be able to test to make sure everything's compatible. I do have Inigo installed. Um, I tend to think of him as more of a roleplay enabler than anything else. He does tend to be quite strong, uh, with his, especially with his starting equipment so he's kind of like a a super follower in that regard um tends to be much stronger you know what i really don't want to be tempted to use phantom shroud i don't want to be tempted to sneak seeing as how we are at night so i think i'm gonna sell this off it pains me to sell off any kind of forgotten magic uh, book because I know that the, it's hard to find just the one that you're looking for and you, you kind of feel like you won the lottery when, when you get that perfect uh, forgotten magic tome. But uh, I really don't want to be tempted to go down a sneaky path with this. The ale we're okay with, the wine we're okay with. We don't need as much as we have, but um, we can store some of it at Ryx as well. We don't need the cloaks either. The staff I'm going to keep. Uh, we might find use of it later on. So I'm going to hold on to that. Okay, we good with everything else? I think we've sold off everything. I can keep clairvoyance. I'm not going to get much money from Until it. And uh, that kind of reinforces, if we have a clairvoyance spell, uh, kind of reinforces the, the roleplay aspect of of him having an extra sense uh, in terms of me telling him where to go and what to be ready for. <clears throat> tea. Now I have to make some. Yeah, I'll have some tea later too. I am highly caffeinated right now. I took a pre-workout supplement this morning so that I could uh, get a nice workout in so I'd be nice and uh, ready to go for the stream, firing on all cylinders so that I didn't uh, didn't die immediately. My fingers are quick. 
Uh, so I am highly caffeinated at the moment, and uh, some tea might put me over the edge and give me some jitters or something. <laughs> okay, we have a traveling vendor. What do you offer, my lady? Take a look. Ooh, staves, eh? Staff of Courage might be handy. Uh, we have enough money to buy it outright, but um, weakness as well would be nice. But that would really wipe us out, and we would like to have some money um, on hand for incidental things that we might find at a vendor that, in, in terms of armor and weapons and stuff like that, that will work better than, than what we're currently carrying. Okay, so as I mentioned, back to Ryax to drop off some of these crafting materials. We are right about noon. Um, that will put us late into the night if we start Leap Falls tonight or uh, directly afterwards, uh, which I'm okay with. I think a long dungeon crawl is worth staying up late for, <laughs> for Cedron. Um, but I'm kind of eager to get going on that, I think. I'm putting the pelts and hides in there to, uh, even though it's labeled as ores and ingots, it doesn't really enforce what you can put in there. Um, there is a there is a specified place for hides and uh, leather, and it's out there, outside uh, next to the the tanning rack over there. But I like having them all in one place just so I can grab what I need when I need it while I'm crafting. Do I have any books to? No, just the Helgen Reborn one. Um, Alright, I think that's just about it. I want to get rid of the Staff of Fury too, though, because... It's handy if we're out of Magicka, but... Um, we haven't had too much issue with it. So far, we've been make, making some... Effective use of... Fury. Uh, yeah, like I said, we've been missing a few times, so we're wasting magic uh, in that regard, but for the most part, we're hitting the targets that we need to hit. Okay, we're ready. Let's take a quick inventory here and make sure that we have everything that we need. Let's see. Clairvoyance. We can come into the menu and get that if we need it. Lesser ward. Is there anything we need lesser ward for? There might be some casters as far as the Draugr go, but I think Gore is going to do well enough. Um, um, we might want to set Lesser Ward up with a, with a hotkey. That's what I'm thinking. Oh no, we have Rock Joint. Less effective with melee weapons. Great. Uh, well, I guess we could head back to uh, Lucan. See if he's got a potion of cure disease for sale. We're going to have to do that. Um, before I get the back on the road, though, uh, i got to take a quick break. I'll be back in just one moment, okay? Stay tuned.
And I'm back. Did you miss me? I missed you. <laughs> what is this workout business that you speak? Oh, uh, you know, just trying to keep it tight at my age, you know? And failing miserably, by the way. <laughs> No, I just always feel like I'm in a better frame of mind when I'm exercising regularly. And I tend to be able to focus better when I stream. <laughs> okay. So we need to address this rock joint situation here. I thought I was doing uh, some very pitiful damage, like less damage than I should be doing against the bandits at Ember Shard. Now we made it through Ember Shard without really any difficulty. Um, not really much adversity there. But uh, going into any situation with a 25% reduction to damage, uh, even when you, the difficulty level you're playing at already cuts your damage output in half, is uh, is kind of a needless nerf there that you don't need to have. Um, so I'm hoping Lucan has a potion that he can sell me. Now with CACO, which I have running, um, those potions of cure disease usually go for... Um, I want to say around 300 coins, uh, but we do have the we do have the gold for it, so not too much of an issue there. That's universal science endorphins and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Usually has at least one. Okay. I hope. I really don't want to run all the way to White Run just to get a potion of cure disease, and then have to run all the way back the down to Bleak you Falls. Find the, claw, the sooner our lives can get back to normal. I'm surprised he can look at me in this uh, behorned helmet <laughs> and keep a straight face. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Yes, he does, and it's cheaper than I expected. Very nice, very nice. In fact, I think I can grab some of these health and uh, stamina potions while I'm at it. And it's not going to hit our wallet too hard there. Okay, good, good, good. So it was good that we came back anyway. All right, so... What do you need? I love that in a permadeath situation like this, just finding that one cure disease potion at the Riverwood Trader feels like such a huge success. <laughs> um, yeah, the just the tension that, that this one death restriction has in this game uh, in a permadeath run adds so much drama to it. Uh, just the, the most mundane little things like that bring the drama. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and work our uh, block and one-handed skill on this. Crap. Oh my god. Did we die to a mud crab? Did we die to a mud crab? Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. We gotta start with health here. Oh my god. I didn't take the, the potion. Okay. You're very, very correct there. <laughs> Alright. I gotta go vomit and then take a nap. And I'll be back in about an hour. <laughs> Mud crabs are nasty creatures, aren't they? Whew. I'm gonna take his legs just for that. How about that? 
Oh my god, you have no idea how hard my heart is just pounding right now. <laughs> Mud crabs at the top of the food chain. Oh my god. Okay, we are not suffering from rock joint. We are just uh, suffering from hypertension now. And I don't know if there's a potion I can take for that at the moment. Oh, there is a wolf over here. I have died to this wolf before at legendary difficulty because he tends to creep up on you really quickly. Oh man, I really should not be entering combat at this stage in my uh, in my cardiac arrest. Whew. Okay, uh, any moment now, I'll regain feeling in my hands and my face, and that will be a good thing. Saved by the level up indeed. Now many people, uh, especially roleplay centric people, kind of feel like uh, leveling up in the midst of combat is cheating. Um, or consider it such in their own games. Uh, I don't. My concept of that is, uh, I've dubbed it the Battle Epiphany. Uh, many warrior characters that I play, I actually save the level ups for battle situations because that uh, sort of represents, um, as I said, a, an epiphany that they have in the course of battle where they either figure out some technique that works really well, um, they've gained a new level of confidence in, in a technique that they have already had, so on and so forth. Uh, for a permadeath on le legendary difficulty, you Bet your sweet took us. I am going to take advantage of that heavily. Grumpy Morrow and Deletus. <laughs> uh, I think you might be right on the nose with that one there, Simba. <laughs> um, Oblivion had a, uh, a similar mechanic, too, where you'd have to rest in order to, quote, meditate on what you, uh... Gore, where are you? There you are. Meditate on what you've learned, is what the game said. And you can only level up out of combat uh, when you slept. We could add that to the wardrobe, why not? Uh, here's the helmet for Gore. For now... Light painted body shield. It's not heavy armor, so we might be losing some armor rating on it, but it gives a little more surface area for blocking arrows, so we'll, we'll take a look at it. The mall, we're not interested in. Love the look of the shield on the back and that horned steel helmet you got going now, by the way. Yeah, that's uh, the shield on the back, I am a big fan of. It's a really cool look. Um. It tends to work even better with, like, Viking-type characters, where you get one of those painted uh, wooden Viking shields on your back. I like the aesthetic a lot. Oh, and I'll, I'm using our good buddies uh, See You Later's um, remodel of the longbow here. You did an excellent job on this, I think. Makes me want to use the longbow more, but, you know, if I'm playing an archery character, I usually use a fancier bow. Value to weight ratio is what we're going for there. Uh, if you were going to do that, you may as well set it to level up only when you sleep, but this is part of the vanilla game. Yeah, I agree. I don't consider it cheating at all. I never really have. Uh, in terms of role play, though, it, it kind of it feels like an exploit, maybe, in order to stay alive. Uh, you can add a little more drama to your play by waiting for it. Um, and you know, you can help bring a character alive by trying to set up uh, stipulations and restrictions about when you can level up specifically for that character. Um, and having like a ritual around leveling up. 
Um, there are role plays where I do that. Uh, it's not often though. I think Jagasta actually he he waits till he's meditating in order to level up. Uh, no, I don't run all good. Uh, my exe version does not support uh, all good. I don't think I can look into it uh, because that would be uh, better than what I am running, which is DSR. It's a it's a converted LE version of DSR, and I've I've made a bunch of my own patches um, in order to get uh, weapons to show up uh, like they should in the sheathed position anyway. Yeah, I'm running lots of um, armor and weapons mods. Um, so it's not complete coverage for DSR, but uh, if I get to a point where there's a weapon or a shield um, that I want to use with this character that isn't showing properly in the sheathed position, then I can I, I do have the capability of, of adding that patch in without too much too much trouble. It's easy enough to create one uh, sheathed model for DSR in a patch. It's when you are doing Fighters several like models we die two deaths. in in like NIF scope and stuff like that where it gets to be tedious and a pain in the butt. But if you do them one at a time, it's not bad at all. Oh, sleep to level up. Okay, looks like they've already spotted us, which is fine. Let's um, try to avoid their arrows here. They can't be as tough as that mud crab, right? Famous last words. Try to lead them a little bit. Boom, nice shot, huh? See if I can get them to turn around and... Wow, Ritual Stone is OP, right? Let's see if I can get this back. There we go. Lord Daka, welcome, friend. Lucky hair. Looks like we got you almost here. missed the end of Cedron at the claws of a mud crab, of all things. <laughs> okay. Do some looty looty here. I'm gonna looty looty your sweet patootie. We could use another water skin. Uh, how are we doing on water, by the way? Okay, two out of three. We are mildly hungry, mildly thirsty, and we are dealing with strong winds with the blizzard here, which is why we're moving so slow. Uh, before we enter the barrow proper, I will take care of the needs there. And I will offload some of these arrows to Gore, because he does use a bow from time to time. Hmm? Hmm? Just leave me all the food. Cloak there too. Actually, Cedrin could use a cloak as well. I feel like the gray, black hide or gray hide. Gray, I think, would go better with the armor. Let's let's see how that looks. Just make sure it doesn't clip too awfully. A little rough around the edges, but you know, when you're in a blizzard, I really don't like how the how it moves around the feet either. But yeah, whatever. It's fine. Uh. I am running another Cloaks mod, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, it's the one Gopher uses in his Leonard playthrough. Uh, <clears throat> the fancier fur Cloaks. Not Winter is Coming, but uh, the newer one. Take care of those needs first here. Alright. Um, 
I feel like our glycogen stores are probably a little empty, so let's go with the apple pie. Get some protein after all that battle. Not drinking the Nord meat again, that was gross. Maybe a little bit of wine to numb the pain and some water skin there. All right. Um, yeah, we're ready to go. Got Fury ready. Yeah, um, if anybody has the link to that, uh, the the scarf, the, the blanket scarves, can you, uh, can you post that or send it to me? I would like to add that to my uh, profiles there. Like the one that uh, Beowfish used for his Frost Orc. And I think um, Twist used it as well. Okay, we should be okay in this encounter here. Uh, we for sure will be if I can if I can land a fury shot on one of these folks, although there are lots of obstacles in the way. There we go. That should be game over, but I'm gonna remain vigilant here just in case. That's right, soften each other up. Kill shot. All right, we're good. I can't believe we can go through bandits so easily. And that mud crab almost just slaughtered the hell out of us. I'm still shaking from that, by the way. That was tough. May as well just, uh... Since that alteration spell is going to be of very limited use to us. Oh my gosh, I can't even... get a novice level lock with the... with the pickaxe here. Where is my one-handed skill at, by the way? Oh, and I have some perks here I can take, too. Uh, first order of business, heavy armor. Absolutely. And I can only take that one. Um, but in five more skill levels here, I can take two. Uh, this will also help me level up in combat a little easier there. We'll get some more skill points out of that. Um, now the rest is between block and one-handed. I think I got to take one-handed. Uh, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. And if we can dispatch our enemies 25% uh, faster via 25% more damage, that's always a good thing. Um, we are at 25. That should be more than enough. I wonder if my sword... Open it. No? I'll have to look at the level requirements on that. See what's going on. Uh, I don't have to do that on on screen though. Um okay, we did get some potions here. Let's favorite those and try to remember to use them. Uh one thing that you can do to make your character stronger, a very easy thing that you can do is to use your potions. So many people, myself included, just completely neglect to use their potions, and they give you such a big boost um, to so many different things that it's unbelievable. Just got to remember to use them. Especially with CACO installed, they give you a lot of... Uh, they tend to give you a lot more boost potions than they do just healing and straight-up stamina and magicka potions. Let's actually try the blunt weapon this time. On the on the on the chest there, but yeah, um, in a in a high difficulty level situation, uh, that's one great way to. I already unlocked it. Let's keep it in mind though. <laughs> uh, that's one of the great ways you can you can make your character stronger is just by using your potions that you're accumulating.
Um, no, I did not. Actually, let me take a, another look at that. That'll, that'll be quick. Did not check for... I know that there is a weapon type stipulation in this mod. Smash locks. Ah, only two-handed weapons are available, so... Go two plus one-handed. That should do it for me there. We'll try our our lock our uh, pickaxe out next. Next time we get to a, a novice locked chest. Okay, so being a pious guy here as well, um, I think that we're not going to loot urns. We'll loot the uh, undead enemies that we fight, but we're not going to loot the urns. The sanctity of death stops when the undead attack. How about that? The linen wraps we're going to take just because we might be able to use them for crafting certain items. I don't know. But there may be an item that we see in our crafting menu at some point that I feel like Cedrin could really use or would look dead sexy in. So we'll grab them. Uh, yeah, same with foods, depending on mods, for sure. Yeah, foods, uh, CACO does have, um, it's not as big as potions, obviously, but things like the bread here, uh, health regenerates 3% faster for two hours, so it's not a huge boost. Um, but it does help a little bit. If you're in a situation where you're constantly trying to avoid enemies and you're low on health or stamina or both, um, things like these do help a little bit. A little bit. Okay, snake snake whale, I believe, yeah? Part of... Uh, Cedrin's extra sensory perception there. He just knows the uh, the answer to that puzzle there. Even though all he would have to do is glance upward to to see the obvious hint there. Okay, so we almost died to a single mud crab. I wonder what three skeever are going to do to us. Hopefully nothing, because our uh, ritual buddies here take care of it for us. Looky here. Looks no, like Whoa. Nice shot, Gore. Okay, I feel like there's one left. That was only two, right? That's a ghost skeever. Oh, there he is. He's being cagey. Don't worry, guys. I can take this one. Let's see what kind of sick loot we have up here. More potions, we'll gladly take that. Well, I bet that he can sense that those Draugr are cursed, or maybe that the power that reanimates them is of a natural forces dissimilar, though, to magic. Alteration of Burrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've had, um, like, Jagasta, for example. He is a character who does revere the dead, but he has no problem looting even the urns. Because he feels that uh, Kanarthi has forsaken these people for uh, these Draugr for good reason. 
so he doesn't feel bad looting things from from evil from the evil dead the evil dead man that was a great movie series <laughs> if you love hilarious B movies B horror movies evil dead is like the pinnacle need? and army of darkness some of my favorites just leave me over food okay i feel like this um Spring Steel Bow would be a nice upgrade for Gore. All right, then. Okay, so <clears throat> challenge number two. This is this can be a difficult fight here. Fury's not going to help us any on this one. Um, the best bet I have is to just let Gore. Uh, engage and hope that the ritual stone gives me some good help. Um, if I do end up engaging with the giant frostbite spider, I need to keep him in stun lock. So <laughs> stamina conservation is going to be a major thing. And I have to be ready with my uh, healing potion hotkey and um, have to remember to use my stamina potions. And before I step foot in there, I am going to take my own advice and buff myself up with some of these potions here. All right, here we go. All right, we got to dodge his poison shots here. Okay, Ritual Stone is helping us out a lot here. Well, he was. Yo, okay, that was really close. Gore, you want to help out here a little bit? Nope, oh, that's bad, that's bad. Okay. Alright, he didn't poison me, though. Don't know why he's ignoring Gore so much. <laughs> okay, that was tense. We didn't come close to dying there, but that was really tense. Yeah. If he had gotten us with a power attack, we would have been dead. The, that uh, poison fang lunging attack that he does. He uh, really took out our ritual stone allies really quickly there. Okay, yeah, my heart's pounding again. Yeah, the thing is, without power attacks, um, I really wasn't doing much damage at, at all to him. And I don't know what Gore was doing. It looked like he got hung up on some terrain over here or something. Um, and then even when he did get in there and start swinging, the spider didn't want to engage with him. He was just chasing me. Uh, which is always a worrisome <laughs> situation. Uh, but even more so in a permadeath situation at level 1. Or level 2, I guess, at this point. <clears throat> Alright, you. Over here. You did it. You killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. Well, that, uh, those spider webs really reflect the light, don't they? Uh, looking for the claw, buddy. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door, the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. Help me down and I'll show you. You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. All right, let me see if I can cut you down. Sweet breath of arcade, thank you. Um, I am going to... Uh, this is in response to Magus's questions about poisons. As a knight, I think he's going to try to avoid using poisons. Um, I'm going to try to not keep them in my inventory. If I get into a very dire situation where I need... Uh, I need a little bit of boost to my damage output, and I happen to have a poison in my inventory, I will use it. Um, if it's a dire life or death situation, yeah, I think I will. I'm not going to be crafting uh, any potions at all, really. Um, not going to be using alchemy. You might see me uh, loot um, ingredients and stuff, but that's just because that's part of the tenets of uh, being a follower of uh, fine Aster. Oh yeah, not looting the urns, not looting the urns. We'll take the soul gems. 
God, it's so hard to avoid looting the urns. Uh, so yeah, poisons we're going to try to avoid. If we happen to have some in our inventory and we really need it, we'll use it. But as a knight, I think his coat of honor would uh, prevent him from going out of his way on procuring them. People get tired of hearing it. But in the arena... Shop smart, shop S smart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that movie. I love that whole series. I gotta have to. I'm gonna have to go back and watch them soon. I hear you there, Gore. That is quite wise. Okay, here we go. Gotta focus. Gotta focus. Let's go, friend. Now, are the Draugr going to be affected by Fury is a big question I have right now. Oh, okay. Well, Giant Frost Spider fighting on our side is uh, a major boom. I do want to see if Fury is going to affect the Draugr. I'm not sure off the top of my head here. Was that effective? Doesn't look like it was. If it didn't say that it wasn't, though, I'll have to reassess. Now I am running the heavy armory mod, um, so we may come across an ancient Nordic war hammer that we can give to Gore that will slightly outperform his current iron war hammer. That is a distinct possibility over here. Fury won't until you take the certain perks in Illusion. Okay, that's kind of what I suspected there. Uh, there's the perk that allows it to work on undead and automatons, correct? But it works fine on live humans and animals. It makes sense they have no mind left. Yeah, pretty much. They're just uh, a bit robotic there. We'll take the clothes. We'll add that to the wardrobe. The journal, sure. And all the armor. He had very little shame in life, as he now does in death. So, don't feel too bad about that. Uh, okay, this is a higher level Draugr. Usually, this probably at this level, it would be a Restless Draugr. Um, but if we can engage this guy up here, it shouldn't trigger those guys down there. But uh, we do, we can fall back on this uh, swinging great trap over here to help wipe them out and to buy us a little more space and to hopefully get uh, Gore engaged if it does trigger those other Draugr down there. Oh, there's Arvel. Oops, I just killed Arvel again. <laughs> oh, that got a little cagey as well there. So, uh, yeah, the enemies seem to have a... <laughs> Seem to have a murder boner for Cedrin here. Uh, they he, they don't really seem to be engaging with our allies there too much. Really coming after us. Okay, now there is a Draugr archer in there a little bit farther. We got to be careful of. Try to stay out of the line of sight for them. And I am running my reformulated uncapper I and I for blocks, so that should be keeping pace with the rest of our skills there too. I think I shared that on Bayo's Discord uh, probably a few months ago now. Basically, it uh, it increases skill progression of block by roughly seven times, and that uh, tends to keep block. 
especially if you're doing a heavy amount of timed blocking and uh, bashing. It tends to keep block uh, on pace with, with the rest of your skills there. Because it, it progresses really slow otherwise. Okay, so we do have enough one-handed skill now that we should be able to unlock these um, apprentice level locks with a bash. Let's try with our pickaxe first. Try this sucker open. There we go. It works. Good, good, good. So thanks for the suggestion on that, Haster. Uh, getting me to look back into the MCM menu for that. That is a bit redundant, saying MCM menu, right? Because MCM stands for Mod Configuration Menu. So if you're saying MCM menu, you're actually saying Mod Configuration Menu menu. <laughs> I gotta try to avoid that. Um, Alright, uh, wait here for me, Gore. I am going to try to finagle my way through this. Oh god. <laughs> here we go again. If I die to this, I might just die in real life. Okay, we made it. Alright. God, my heart is pounding so much. This is probably not good for my health, this permadeath stuff. <laughs> okay, why don't you follow along now? What do you need? Uh, let me get caught up on chat here a little bit. Uh, are there any illusion trainers in Whiterun or Falkreath? I don't believe so. Illusion trainers are, are hard to come by if you're not, if you're outside of the college. Um, there is a magic trainer, I think, in Kynesgrove, maybe? Dravina Stoneweaver? Or is she, uh, Alteration? She might be Alteration. Runil is, uh, is Conjuration, that's correct. Really? You're not picking the right weapon for the job. There we go. I'll swoop in and take all the glory there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know Fury doesn't work on these guys, but I can use it to trigger aggro on the Draugr here and also knock a lamp into the oil there. Trigger aggro. We'll see if we can get them to funnel through this narrow corridor here. Okay. Cedric shown some moves here. Ice Lance, Destruction, probably not going to use it. I might learn that spell just in case I need uh, some kind of ranged damage option. Uh, at least until we can get our crossbow crafted up. I am running uh, faction crossbows. Um, and I believe the first one... I, I don't I don't see Cedrin joining the Civil War on either side, at least right away. Um, but the faction crossbow that I think we first have access to is the Companions one. Unless we decide to join the Thieves Guild, but I don't think Cedrin would do that. Uh, he's trying to make a name for himself, not trying to stifle his name. <laughs> I don't know why I tried to fury him just now. Um, but I, I do think that uh, Cedrin here will join the Companions once he, once he discovers them. A budding knight and all that uh, would definitely want to join a troop of uh, of warriors. 
for hire. Especially seeing as how the companions have such a respected name in Skyrim. May as well grab some of these. Make Finaster happy. <clears throat> Do a quick save here just in case I get bugged out on the ore vein. Oh yeah, you, uh, Strudel, you can use all kinds of um, non-damage-causing spells as projectiles to knock things around. Fury in particular. Can come in handy when you have somebody who really doesn't want to use a bow for whatever reason. Um, okay, quick save. I'm going to pause and I want to get caught up on chat here. Uh, William says it's like pin number. Yeah, MCM menu is like pin number, here, right? It's the pin, it's not a pin number. It's not the personal identification number number. Uh, damn, only Largspur and Winterhold for illusion. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anything else there. Oh, it, there aren't any in Solstheim either? Guess not. He's easy to forget after you bring him Barrett's Ashes. Yeah, um... Is the uh, Conjuration training from Runil available before you retrieve his journal as well? Because I, I thought that you had to retrieve his journal before he offered uh, conjuration training. Kind of like Danica in, in Whiterun, you have to do her quest before she's a trainer. Uh, you can use other spells too, just like Mage Light, anything that's a projectile. Yeah, very true. Uh, I've used ice spikes and what have you, obviously projectiles. Yeah, because they they have a physical impact on anything that they hit. But yeah, you can use you can use the illusion stuff too. Amazing how we all learn something new despite the many years we've been playing Skyrim. For sure, I still learn stuff about this game that I haven't. You know, uh, the thousands of hours I played this game, I still haven't done the Blood Horkers quest, and I have no idea how to trigger it. <laughs> uh, I keep meaning to look into it and try it out, but uh, that's one thing I've never done. So there are things that I've never experienced in this game. I'm telling you that Trainer's Galore mod is a winner. It turns every NPC into a trainer based on class. Super useful and seems to play nice with other speech mods. Yep, yep, yep. Training is something that's also overlooked. Much like the uh, the passives you get from, um, from potions. Uh, training gets overlooked a lot. Uh, a lot of people like to say that the economy in Skyrim is broken, which it is, for sure. <laughs> uh, but it also um, it helps to know that you have, if you train regularly and try to make the most use of, of trainers for every level that you have, um, you end up going through gold really, really quickly especially at higher levels. That and enchanting are usually what I spend my end game uh, high amounts of gold on. All right, pickaxe, I'm going to favorite. <clears throat> Wow, that pickaxe has a really high rate of uh, attack on there, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it kept hitting the, the skeleton there, so I, I used the uh, power attack to change the trajectory of the, the hurt box on that. <laughs> or the hit box on it, I mean. Um, to actually hit the, uh, the treasure box there. 
just a helpful hint if you're if you're running the lock over hall and you're trying to smash open a lock and you can't seem to hit it for some reason, changing to a power attack might get you just the right angle you need there. Yep, Babat is uh, alchemy, and I think she. Oh no, there's a light armor trainer, uh, Nazir, in the Dark Brotherhood as well. So they have light armor and they have alchemy, but I think that's all they have there in terms of trainers. Okay, uh, that's another high level Draugr in there. Let's see if we have any. Resist fire is not going to help. Poison of Paralysis, Potion of Feather, Health Fortification. Uh, so we'll probably take the, the Fortitude and maybe the Fortification here for this fight. Maybe the Ritual Stone will help us out a little bit here. Uh, but this can be a tough fight. Uh, let's try to stay light on our feet. Get buffed up here. Alright, Gore, I'm going to need you to pick up some slack here. Oh great, we got Skeevers, which are not going to last long at all. Okay, he is engaged with Gore now. Keep Gore in the game as long as possible by trying to keep that Draugr in stunlock. Ancient Nord Long Mace. This is technically a Warhammer, um, but it is a Long Mace. And Gore talks, has dialogue talking about um, hammers, so we're going to try to keep him with things that are named Hammer, because it's hammer time. I don't see Cedrin using scrolls either. Uh, he might use scrolls that are... Um, that fall within his schools of magic, um, illusion and restoration, but I don't want to use scrolls as a method of uh, branching out from there. I'm trying to keep this playstyle uh, concise so that we don't fall into um, any kind of a meta funnel for strongest, uh, strongest build types and stuff like that. Oh, definitely don't want to use that. Maybe we'll switch to the uh, the the mall. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't it doesn't look all that right seeing a, a, a grimy old pickaxe on on the hip of this this knight in shining armor. But I think having a mall on him would work better, or even like a a war pick or something. Okay, so I'm going to need to sprint my way through that. Um, there's only two swinging, swinging blades there, so we should be able to get that, get through that without being too scathed. Uh, we're gonna keep. Um, Finally, some action. We're going to keep. Let's go. Gore here as backup. Uh, I think what we're going to do is run through here. We're going to try to pull the chain to stop the trap. That's going to trigger the Draugr in the sarcophagus to the left, and we're going to run back here um, to get Gore's help with that if we need it. Get some pot shots in there. <laughs> and run away. Alright, Gore. Here they come. Alright. Yep. The two-handed fellas hit hard, but they have a lot of wind-up. You can usually bash them out of whatever they're trying to do there. Oh, yeah, right behind you there. When I 
I was in the dungeon. A bunch of the guards used to torture the prisoner in the cell next to mine. It wasn't right. It wasn't fair. I like how Gore has this brutal, crude personality, but he does have uh, a sort of rudimentary moral code as well. He doesn't want to fight animals in the arena because that is not their choice. It's the fight master's choice. Um, and he doesn't like people that can't defend themselves being tortured, which is kind of endearing, I would say. Hey Joe, welcome aboard. Smooth sailing so far, except for the mud crab that almost caused uh, us to die permanently. <laughs> we were down to literally one health. Uh, there was just a sliver of red left in the health gauge, and it was all because of a tiny little mud crab that clawed our undercarriage. It was stressful times, for sure. But we made it through, just barely. Um, okay, Golden Claw. It's it's two turns on each layer there, so uh, Bear, Moth, Owl, we'll keep that in mind in case we need it, but we probably won't. One, one, one two, two, two. Okay, so a couple of pivotal moments here. This Draugr is pretty tough. Um, at this level, not going to be... Well, I think it's technically a, a death lord of some sort, but it's a low level one. Uh, still tough at low levels. Uh, we're gonna need some some help from the ritual stone here, and we're definitely going to be using gore as a meat shield uh, as effectively as possible. The other moment of truth here is going to be whether or not Cedrin can read word walls. We don't know if Cedrin is dragonborn. Um, even if he is not, he still may be able to read uh, the word wall without having the dragon blood. Um, so yeah, I think... Uh, I don't think that there is an option to be... Well, maybe there is. You might be able to read word walls and not have to spend a dragon soul uh, in order to use them. That's an option, I believe. Um... I'm not sure whether or not dragons show up uh, if for sure if you can if you can read um, arena, dragon walls or not. Impressive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. I'm not hearing any chanting. Are we close enough yet? Okay. I don't think we can read dragon walls. Okay, so, Cedrin is not Dragonborn. Get as many pot shots in there as we can. He does shout, he's got a lot of health. Try to stay behind him. He's got an enchanted weapon there. He's injured. Okay. Well done. Classic pincher maneuver, huh? Well done, Gore. Kept him on his uh, on his heels the entire time. Okay. So we're good. Uh, that fight could have gone very, very differently. What is Battle Tide? Is that an illusion? It also might be alteration, but I don't think we're going to use it anyway. Okay. And there was no dragon stone in here either. I'm not sure what that indicates. That might indicate that the main quest will not be active. Um, which makes sense if we're not dragonborn. There will be no main quest. Okay, so we're learning a little bit more about Cedron now. Okay, looks like we're getting some... Uh, 
some buffering here. Hopefully that's just momentary. Uh, I'll try to try to keep things slow day as far as uh, failing me. Um, 